Welcome back. This is our final lecture uh, in establishing that the correlation polytope has an extension complexity that is at least 1.5 to the n. Recall that we have uh, accomplished this by looking at um, by looking at the set D of n, which is equal to all pairs a b, where each where a is a subset of uh, one to n, b is a subset of one to n. You can look back at previous lectures to see uh, that we identify a with a face and b with uh, a vertex, and how this links to the face vertex problem, communication complexity, and so on. We don't need that for the result, the final result we want, right here. Uh, so this is our set, uh, so D of n is the set of all A, B, such that A and B have empty intersection. And in the previous lecture, we showed that um, extension complexity of the correlation polytope upper bounds the size of a minimum a minimum size covering of d of n by what we defined in the previous lecture is valid uh, by valid sets. So this is what we established in the previous lecture. What we're going to show here is that any covering has to have a, uh, a very big size. And we're going to do this as following. So let's note first, this is the first lemma is actually quite straightforward, that um, the cardinality of D of n is equal to 3, uh, 3 raised to the n. So um, this comes from the fact that D of n consists of all pairs uh, a, um, a and B that, that are subsets. I'll leave this as, uh, as an exercise. It basically comes from a fact that uh, when I'm building A and B, I have to be disjoint. Um, well, I guess I, we're basically giving the uh, proof, so I'll erase the fact that this is a, an exercise. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at subset A and B, and I just go through all n elements. And each element, I can assign it either to A or to B or neither, but I can't assign it to both. So in other words, for each element, I have exactly three choices. Hence, we have three to the n. Um, so the, uh, what we're going to then show is the following. Any covering of d to the n by valid sets. It's a bit redundant because I defined a covering has to be one of valid sets, but I guess it doesn't hurt to mention it again. Um, has at least 1.5 to the n elements, uh, members, or sets. And how are we going to show this? We show this by demonstrating through a simple, uh, essentially by accounting argument, by demonstrating that the largest cardinality of any valid subset of D is at most 2 to the n. So in other words, if D is contained in valid in the union of valid subsets, R1, R2, 
up to rr. And if, if d of n has 3 to the n elements and each ri can have at most 2 to the n elements, well, then I, I need r to be at least 1.5 to the n. Um, which is what we have. Okay, so let's uh, let's get to uh, let's get to this uh, to this proof. It's ultimately going to come down to a proof by induction. So let's let rho of n denote the largest cardinality of any subset. This is what we want to show is bounded by two to the n. So this is the largest cardinality of any valid subset of d to the n. And we will show that rho of n is bounded by 2 to the n. And we're going to do this by induction. We prove by induction that rho of n is less than or equal to twice rho of n minus 1 for any n greater than or equal to 1. And rho of 0 is equal to 1. And therefore, this, uh, this, will, this will give us our, our result. So let's uh, try to use an induction. In order to do this, for any set R, I need to express it as uh, the union of two sets that are in D n minus 1. So let's take any R that's a subset of, uh, of D of n. And I'm going to define the following two sets. R1 is going to be the union of three sets. R1 is the union of all pairs A and B of R such that element uh, subset A contains the last element N. And uh, it's the union of that with all pairs A, B, and R, such that if I add that last element to A, then this is no longer in R. So what might be such an example? So for, exa uh, for instance, if... Um, we know that if uh, B contains element N, then any pair AB that is in R would be in this, in this second set. Because if I were to add N to A, then A and B would now have intersection, uh, which, is, which is not allowed since, any, since R is a subset of D of N, the subsets A and B that have, that have no intersection. This is a, as an illustration of what, of what, this, what this means. Uh, I said it's the union of three sets. I meant it's the union of two sets and the intersection um, of, a, of the set, the following set, n cross n minus 1. So this is all subsets. This last, this last thing is, is all subsets a, b, such that b does not contain the element n. And R2 is essentially going to be the, the, the mirror of this, uh, flipping the roles of A and B. So R2 is going to be the union of two sets, all pairs A and B. Let me write that a little more clearly. It's going to be the union of all pairs A and B in R, such that n is an element of B and all pairs A, B, and R such that if I were to add N to B, then uh, we would not be in R anymore. A, B union N is not in R. And it's the intersection, again, with, uh, with the corresponding set N minus 1 now cross N. So this last set 
is all pairs A and B where A does not contain element N. Now we're going to define a map that we're going to show is injective that maps uh, that's injective on R1 and R2, a map that maps us back to D of N minus one. And this is gonna be the key for us to use our induction. So let's uh, define the map R. Whoops, I've overloaded R. Uh, let's uh, call it something different. Um, let's uh, define um, the map C mapping from R to D N minus one given by, so it takes any element of R, A, B, and it just uh, just chops off the last element. So this is, this is just a projection. Maybe I should have called it pi. Um, we've already used pi. Um, yeah, let's call it pi. I think it's it'll be more. It'll be more. Uh, I'll call it even pi sub n to remind us that it's just dropping the last coordinate. So it maps a to a minus n and b minus n. So you know if a b don't contain n, then it just it just re returns the same the re the same set. So first, let's check that. Uh, let's check properties of r and one and r two. So First of all, we're going to show that R1 and R2 are both valid. Uh, they inherit this validness property, the, their validity from R. So uh, we're going to show that R valid implies R1 is valid. And the exact same reasoning will apply to showing that R2 is, um, is valid. Um, OK, so. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so I, I, actually, I'm sorry. This is this is this is this follows immediately. Uh, this follows immediately since R1 is a subset of R. So validity is uh, it, it, clearly it's an inherited property by by subsets. Um, so similarly for R2. But what we want to show is that uh, is that by validity of R1 pi n of r1 is also going to be valid. So th this, is, this is what requires uh, so, some attention. So our, the next claim is the following, that r1 valid implies that pi n of r1 is valid, and similarly for r2. So let's, let's see why that is, uh, let's see why that's the case. So indeed, um, you know, R1 valid, what does that tell us? It tells us that uh, if A, B, I'm copying the definition of validity, if any two sets, pairs A, B, and A prime, B prime, are in R1, validity tells us that A intersect B prime doesn't have intersection one, and similarly, A prime intersect B doesn't have intersection one. And this implies that A, that's the definition of validity. Okay, but now, uh, since R1, by definition here of, this, uh, of this, this, final, this final defining term here, since R1 is a subset of N cross N minus one, that immediately tells us that B and B prime uh, don't contain element n, well, in particular b prime here. Um, n is not an element of b, b dash or b prime. And therefore, what that tells us is if I look at a minus n intersect b dash minus n, could that be one? And no, it clearly couldn't. Uh, couldn't be one because um, I couldn't, uh, this can't be one because the only, what, what could have happened if N had been in both A and B, A and B dash, 
is that perhaps they had intersection two and by removing n, I, I made the intersection one. But since n was not in B dash, by removing n, I maybe didn't do anything, uh, but possibly I removed an element of A, but that element of A wasn't in B dash, so I didn't change the intersection uh, at all. So, so again, this, this concludes the claim. So that means that uh, pi n of R1 is valid and exactly the same argument applies for R2 because in R2 uh, n is not going to be an element of the first set A in A dash. Similarly pi n of R2 is valid. Okay. We're, we're, we're setting us ourselves up to use induction. This is why we want to we want to prove uh, we want to prove validity. So, uh, okay, so we have that pi n of r1 and pi n of r2 are both valid. Now, I'm going to show that pi is in fact injective. Um, essentially, by definition, by definition of r1 and r2, pi n is injective on R1 and R2. In other words, there aren't two elements of R1 that map to the same, uh, that map to the same uh, A and B. Um, so let's, let's just double check, or just convince ourselves of that. If, if there is an AB, that is in the image of pi one. So if there's an AB that is in n minus one cross n minus one, um, that's in the image. So AB is uh, an element of pi of R one, then um, how could that have happened? Then either uh, A union N B was an R1 or A and B was already in R1 but both of these cannot happen uh, so both cannot happen by definition and that is exactly the definition of injective. So, so, so hence, pi n of R1 uh, and R1 have the same number of elements, and pi n of R2 and R2 have the same number of elements. But now, finally, we can use induction because, uh, because uh, pi n of R1 is valid, and it's a subset of dn minus 1. So, uh, Injective, by injectiveness, this implies um, since pi n is injective on R1 and R2, that tells us that the cardinality of R1 is uh, equal to the cardinality of pi of R1. and the cardinality of R2 is equal to the cardinality of pi of R2. But by induction, each one of these is bounded by, um, uh, each one of these is bounded by rho of n minus one, so their sum can be at most two rho n minus one. So what we basically just proved is that the cardinality of R is less than two rho of n minus one. Let me just flip back a page so we can we can see this is exactly what we wanted what we wanted to show. And since R of zero is equal to one, this implies that this is less than two to the n. Hence, the lemma is proved. 
which tells us again that um, the largest valid subset of D of n has cardinality at most 2 to the n. And that exactly concludes the lemma. That therefore means that if I want to cover a set of size 3 to the n, I need at least 1.5 to the n of, of these sets. And this concludes the proof that the correlation polytope has extension complexity at least 1.5 to the n.